This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the water of crystallization. The water of crystallization is the fixed number of water molecules present in one formula unit of a salt. In this picture on the left, we have the hydrated salt copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. On the right, we have the anhydrous salt copper 2 sulfate. The difference between the two salts is the salt on the left still has the five water molecules attached to the salt. These five water molecules are the water of crystallization. The hydrated salt is named according to how many water molecules there are in the salt. So in this case, the salt is named copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate because there are five water molecules. Upon heating, the blue copper sulfate pentahydrate decomposes, forming the white anhydrous salt and water vapor. On the left, we can see the blue hydrated salt being heated forming the white anhydrous salt. And here we have the equation for the decomposition of copper sulfate pentahydrate into the anhydrous salt and water vapor. Care must be taken as overheating of the anhydrous salt can cause further decomposition to take place. Next, we'll look at the experimental procedure for determining the water of crystallization. The first step is to measure the mass of an empty crucible and lid. Step 2 is add a known mass of the sample and record the mass. Step 3 is heat the crucible for 5 minutes, holding the lid at an angle so the gas can escape. Step 4 is after cooling, reweigh the crucible, lid and contents. And step 5 is repeat steps 3 and 4 until the mass remains constant. This is known as heating to constant mass. So next, we'll determine the water of crystallization for the hydrated salt BaCl2XH2O from the following data. So in this table, we have the mass of crucible and lid, the mass of crucible, lid and sample, the mass of crucible, lid and sample after first heating, and the mass of the crucible, lid and sample after second heating. Note that the mass of the crucible, lid and sample after first heating and second heating are the same. This is what is meant by heating to constant mass. So first we'll determine the mass of the hydrated sample. To do this we subtract the mass of the crucible and lid from the mass of the crucible, lid and sample, which gives us 5.00 grams. Next we determine the mass of water driven off when the sample was heated. To do this we subtract the mass of crucible, lid and sample after heating from the mass of the crucible, lid and sample which gives us 0.74 grams. And finally, we can determine the mass of the anhydrous BaCl2. To do this, we subtract the mass of water driven off when the sample was heated from the mass of the hydrated sample, which gives us 4.76 grams. Next, we need to convert from mass in grams to amount in moles. So we divide the mass of the anhydrous sample by its molar mass, which gives us 0.02 moles. Next, for the water, we divide the mass of water driven off by the molar mass of water, which gives us 0.04 moles. We then divide each of these values by the smallest to give us the lowest whole number ratio. So that's 1 for the anhydrous BaCl2 and 2 for the H2O. This gives us the formula for the hydrated salt, which is BaCl2-2H2O. The name of the salt is barium chloride dihydrate. Finally, we look at the assumptions made in the experiment. The first assumption is that all mass lost is due to the loss of water. The second is that all water of crystallization is driven off. The third is that the crucible does not absorb water. And the last assumption is that the anhydrous barium chloride does not decompose further.